right, I'm just going to have a quick chat about ears. Um, so some people prefer not to do their dog's ears, their legato ears. Um, some vets prefer groomers not to do their dog legato's ears. But um, the point is, some of them do suffer from bad ears. I have one that, um, she's got terribly small, well Lola, she has very small um, ear canals. She's all, she, all her life she's suffered from ear problems with her ears, so um, I've had to sort of keep on top of hers. Um, Hebe Touchwood has never had a, an ear problem at all. Um, but the hair inside the ear canal can build up, they're water dogs. It's, it's, it's natural for them to have a, a, like a, a plug in there to sort of protect their ears. Um, but some get so solid and so, so thick, it's like, it, it, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to remove um, and actually can have to be removed by the vet. Um, so to keep on top of that, um, you know, it's, it's an idea just to tweak out a few hairs, even if you do two or three hairs a, a week. Um, and when you have a puppy, it's a good idea to, from the word go, get them used to just you putting your finger in their ears and just you know, tweaking at it. Just they need to be used to you putting your fingers in their ears. Normally Hebe actually quite enjoys it. So um, I've done it ever since you was a puppy and she quite enjoys it. Um, so we've got, I've got ear cleaner. That's a good idea to have. Uh, this is plucking powder, which is like a chalk. Um, just gives you a bit of grip. Um, and this is thornet. So if you have a dog that suffers from canker, um, which is the, like the, sort of the, the waxy, to build up of dark brown yuck in there. This is really good, um, and for, for ear mites and things. So that's, it's good to have that in your, in your cupboard. Um, so, and also, I've got these, but um, I, I don't tend to use them very much. Some people, rather than plucking their dog's ears, they actually snip the hair out. Well, I mean, yes, you can do that if you're really, really careful. Um, and these, um, I'm just putting some powder in there. These are bull nose scissors, which you could, they, I wouldn't recommend going in there with sharp scissors with a sharp point. These have got a nice blunt, you can see that. Uh, and you, so you could, if you pulled it out as far as possible, then snip it like that. But, mm, I mean, I don't recommend it, to be honest, but everybody has a different idea. Um, so, I put a little bit of um, the ear plucking powder into Hayes. Um, and a tiny, mini bit at a time, I'm just going to tweak that out like that. Um, as I say, she's normally pretty good, um, and actually her hair comes out fairly easily. Some legato, I mean, they tend to sort of, it can be quite difficult to get it out, but just tweaking it out. And you can get some bits that go right down inside the um, ear canal, and it, they're really quite long. Um, but I'm just, just a bit at a time pulling that out. Good girl, I know. You're being a good girl. Um, that's a good girl. It's not coming out easily. You can just get hold of it and just do that. And they actually quite like that. It's a bit like that when they're, when they're scratching their, their ears. They quite like that feeling and it just sort of frees it up a bit. No, it's not coming out very easily, but there's a good Not, as I say, not all of them like this. So um, again, it's it's a it's a decision you make whether you persevere and do it yourself, or whether you wait for your groomer to do it, or whether you get the vet to do it. But um, unless they're really really solid and they're having problems with their ears, you know, it's not absolutely essential to do them. But it's just a good idea to keep on top of them. Um, Nearly there. Good girl. The crazy thing is they actually do quite like this stuff. They love the smell of it. So it almost can become a reward. So they like to eat it, which isn't very nice, but that's what they like to do. And that's encourage them to do it. If it's a reward, that's fine. Right. Okay. Good girl. I'm actually going to get that bit with my forceps. Not everyone's going to have forceps, but it just gives me a little bit, just a bit more leverage. So 
I'm just gonna, and when they shake their head like that, if you've got hold of them with the forceps, just if they, if they shake their heads, they're actually, they're, they're actually releasing it themselves. Good girl. There, see? Be very careful not to pinch the ear. There, it's a nice long bit. Right, so I'm going to stop there. Um, and I'm just going to give her a bit of a wipe out with oops, some cotton wool, if I can find the cotton wool. Yes, just going to squeeze a bit onto there and then just give it a wipe out. Now, if you were going to be using the fornit, there's a way, and literally, for a tiny, tiny bit, a pinch of it into the cap, and then I just tip it in, or tip it, and just sort of drop it over that air canal like that, and then just, just leave it like that. That's all you have to do with that. Good, good, yeah. Right, I'm just going to um, clip her nails um, and talk again a bit, a bit about black nail or dark brown nails um, because obviously it's difficult to see the, the wick. Um, you basically, it's, it's a matter of creating the same angle that that claw would rest on the ground. That is the angle that you want to cut. If you cut it, across at a right angle you're going to you're likely to catch the um the, the soft fleshy quick inside the nail um, so you rest your clippers across at, so at the angle of, of the of the if, if it was the ground and then snip what's um any excess any excess that's within between your clipper blades your, your um, nail clipper braids, take them off. But it's the angle, when you put the foot back down on the ground, the angle I cut is the angle of the ground. It's not difficult and it's not something to be scared about. Um, err on the side of caution. Don't, if you're worried about taking too much, just, just nibble the ends. Now, can you see the, I don't know if you can see the, the dew claw there? You see the shape of it, I can see the tip that needs to come off. So again, I create that same angle and just take that end off. To the back, again, it's a bit like lifting a horse's hoof. The flat, trim is flat onto the, onto the base of the, the uh, nail. Remove any excess. Sometimes, let me just get the last one. Right, sometimes you get a legato that's really difficult to do their nails. One way you can do it is to do it from the other side. For some reason, they, they can be easier if you come in from the other side. But again, you have to have it at the right angle, flat on that nail, take the excess off. Just remembering that legato nails, the quick goes down further than most dogs because they're bred to dig and to scramble in and out of boats and things, the quick goes further down, the nails are much longer. So just have to have that in mind. But don't be scared of doing your nail, their nails because again, it needs to be done, but just, just err on the side of caution. And if you have one that is, being, that one's actually been broken off, um, that is resistant, just build it up. You know, start off by just getting a hold of the foot, if it's fighting to get its foot back, hold the foot firmly but quietly, and when it stops fighting, you let the foot go. Okay? So um, if it thinks that if it fights and pulls the foot, foot from you, then um, and, and you'll let go, then basically it's controlling the situation. But by calm and relaxed and breathe, just hold the foot, hold it, hold it, hold it, and then either let it go or just do one nail and then let it go and then you know you can treat the dog if it's really resistant and it lets you do it it tolerates it then give them a reward um, but uh, 
Yeah, it's just patience. It's patience and confidence. If you attack, if you attempt this and you're feeling nervous and you're all jittery and all upset and all, 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 all wound up, the dog's going to pick up on it. You've got to be quietly confident and just, just do it. Um, just breathe and do it. Uh, as I say, if you only take tiny amounts at a time, that's fine. You're learning and the dog is, you're building the trust between you and your dog.